Good day grade 12. Welcome to the second lesson in week 31. We are continuing with preparing you for the final exams by going through paper 1 questions and this is the first question set of long questions. So it says a block of mass 2 kilograms is at rest on a horizontal rough surface. Before I carry on with this question I have to say you need to make sure you can do these questions with the tension and the string between the two objects because it is very popular at the moment. Science, if you can believe it, goes through different types of trends and at the moment the popular question out of all the questions is this type of question. So please make sure you can do these type of questions. Right, so let's go back to it. We've got a block, mass 2, on a rough horizontal surface. The block is connected to another block of mass 1.5 kilograms by means of a light inextensible string, big word for not stretchy, which hangs over a frictionless pulley. The 2 kilogram block experiences a constant frictional force of 3,1 newtons, okay, when a force of 20 newtons is applied to the block, as shown in the diagram. Ignore the effects of air friction. Yay! Now it says define the term kinetic frictional force. Basically, this is the frictional force that an object has when it is moving. Okay, go and learn your definition properly. Then it says draw a labeled free diagram indicating all the forces acting on the 2 kilogram block. Okay, so free body diagram is a dot. And what do they want? They want all the forces. And here's your hint. There's five marks. So should be drawing five forces. So let's think about it. Do you agree that we've got the applied force of 20 newtons? There is the force of gravity and the equal and opposite normal force, F normal. There is the tension in the string. Yeah, that there. And we've got the force of friction, the force of friction. One, two, three, four, five. There we go. We sorted. Now it says apply Newton's second law, which is F net equals mass times acceleration, to each of the blocks and calculate the magnitude of the acceleration of the blocks. Okay, so here's your hint, the fact that you have to apply to each of the blocks. Okay, so let's just draw the free body diagram from this dude as well. So if we do that, the free body diagram here is going to be the force of gravity here and the tension up. And do you agree that this tension here is equal to this tension here? So yeah, they've been sneaky. They haven't asked you to draw two free body diagrams so you could realize that that tension is equal to that tension, okay? They've actually made you try and realize that you need to do it by saying that you need to apply it to each of the blocks. So we also know that this object is accelerating. They're both accelerating. And they said calculate the magnitude of the acceleration of the blocks. They're both accelerating with the same magnitude. So if I had to look at this guy and I drew, wrote out my formula for Newton's second law, do you agree that F net, which equals mass times acceleration, would equal the sum of these forces, which would be T plus the force of gravity? Remember, I'm not allocating stiff directions yet, okay? If I had to draw the thing here, the, the F net equation for this dude, I'd be going F net is equal to 20 plus T plus the force of friction. Again, I'm not allocating direction yet. I'm just giving you an idea of the fact that we need to use these three forces to work out the net acceleration. And I need to use these two forces to work out my net acceleration here. But these net accelerations are the same. The net forces are different, but the accelerations are the same. OK, so then. Do you agree? I can say 1 comma 5 and I'm going to choose right as positive, okay? And then I'm therefore, if this is right as positive, then up is going to be positive, yeah? Because if that goes right, then this is going up, okay? So 1.5a is equal to t minus the force of gravity, which is going to be 9 comma 8 times the mass of this, which is 1 comma 5. Okay, so do you give, I could solve this equation for t. So I could say 1 comma 5a plus, and let's pop this in a calculator, I've got 9.8 times 
times 1.5 is equal to 14.7, 14,7, and that is equal to t. Right, now I can say, let's work with this one, and I can say the net force is the mass of this object, which is 2, times by the acceleration of a, is equal to 20 minus t, because 20 is in the opposite direction, minus the force of friction, which they've given us, is 3.1. Okay, so therefore we can say, and I'm going to write over here because I need the space, 2a equals 20 minus t, but t is this bit here, so I'm going to fill it in, 1 comma 5a plus 14.7, and please remember your brackets, otherwise you're going to get this wrong, minus 3 comma 1. So now I'm going to get everything that is an A onto the other side and everything that's a number is going to stay on the one side. So this becomes 2A is equal to 20, let's multiply out this bracket first, minus 1 comma 5A, minus times the plus is minus 14 comma 7, minus 3 comma 1, take that across, it becomes 2A plus 1 comma 5A, is equal to 20 minus 14 comma 7 minus 3 comma 1. So therefore we've got 3 comma 5a is equal to, and just let's do that on our calculator, so we've got 20 minus 14.7 minus 3.1 equals 2 comma 2, so that's 2 comma 2, therefore a is 2 comma 2 divided by 3 comma 5 which equals divided by 3 comma 5 equals 0 comma 63. So that's 0 comma 63 meters per second squared. And it is to the right because it's a positive value, but you didn't need to say that because they just say calculate the magnitude. That's actually a very nice question in grade 12s. Trust me, you need to know a two block system. I, there is a very, very strong likelihood because it's in the new CAPS curriculum and everybody's very excited about setting questions on this. So it's chances are, a very high chance that this type of question is going to be in your exams. Next it says, a girl stands on a platform in a classroom. Okay, she throws a ball vertically downward. So she throws it down, okay to the floor, hoping that the ball, after it bounces on the floor, will hit the ceiling of the classroom. She throws the ball with a speed of 8, so the initial velocity is 8 meters per second and it's downwards. Okay, and it's from a height of 1.8 meters. It says ignore the effects of air friction. Write down the magnitude and the direction of the acceleration of the ball immediately after the ball left her hand. Well, what is the only force that's acting on this ball, other than air friction, which we're ignoring, after the ball has left her hand? Well, the only force acting on it is gravity. So the magnitude and the direction of the ball acceleration is going to be 9,8 meters per second squared downwards. In grade 12, again, you may not just draw the arrow, you need to write the word downwards. Now it says, is the motion of the ball, why it is moving downwards to the floor, towards the floor, free fall? Explain your answer. And the answer is yes, because once it has left your hand and there's no other forces acting on it, then it is, other than the force of gravity, then it is in free fall. So that we've done and that we've done. Now it says, calculate the magnitude of the velocity with which the ball hits the ground. Okay, so we've got an initial velocity of 8. We are choosing down as positive. Your acceleration is 9 comma 8. Your final velocity is the question mark and we've got delta x is 1 comma 8. So if you go through your equations of motion you'll see the best one to use is vf squared equals vi squared plus 2a delta x. That is 8 squared plus 2 times 9 comma 8 times 1 comma 8 we're going to use our calculator, so we've got 64 plus bracket 2 times 9.8 times 1.8 close bracket equals, and then we're going to square root the answer and it equals 9,96. So that's 9,96 meters per second, and it just asks for the magnitude, so you do not need to write downwards. Okay, now it says, how long does it take for the ball to hit the floor? 
Okay, so there are a couple of equations we can use. Um, anyone with the time. So let me just show you something. You've got VF equals VI plus A delta T. We've got um, delta X is equal to VI delta T plus a half AT squared. And then we've got delta X is equal to VF plus VI over to delta T and then obviously this one here. Yeah. Now the problem with this one and this one is that we've worked out VF here and if we've got VF wrong then when we work out the time we're also going to get it wrong. So I personally even though it's a trick here of the equations would use this one here simply because if I've made v, if made a mistake and got VF wrong then I'm going to lose marks here. Okay, carryover marks only work if there's no other way to do this question and you can do this question without using a calculation that you've already done so that's why you wouldn't get carryover marks if you got this wrong. So delta x is equal to vi delta t plus a half a delta t squared. This is 1 comma 8 is equal to the initial velocity which is 8 times by t plus a half times 9 comma 8 t squared. So therefore you've got 4 comma 9 t squared plus 8 t minus 1 comma 8 equals 0 and yes we do have to use the formula. So we've got t is equal to minus b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. So we need to substitute in. So we've got minus 8 plus or minus the square root of 64 minus 4 times 4 comma 9 times minus 1 comma 8 all over 9 comma 8. So then we pop this in our calculator and we go minus 8, we've got plus, why don't we, square root of 64 minus bracket 4 times 4.9 times negative 1.8, close bracket, Ugh. all over 9.8 equals 0, 2. So the answer is 0, 2 seconds. And I don't need to do the other one because the other one's going to be a negative and you can't get a negative time. So the correct answer is 0, 2 seconds. So there you go. Now we've got that. So the time it took here was 0, 2 seconds and the final velocity here, where is it? It is 9, 9, 6. Now it says the ball bounces inelastically inelastically on the floor where the speed of the ball decreases by 20% and the ball is in contact with the floor 0 0.01 seconds. Determine by means of calculation whether the ball will reach the ceiling after it's bounced. Okay, so I'm going to erase this and then we're going to use our information to calculate what the final height is. So we've also got VF squared is equal to VI squared plus 2A delta X. Okay, just to fill in those equations. Right, so they say determine by means of calculations whether the ball will reach the ceiling after it's bounced. In other words, we want to know what is its maximum height after it's bounced. So when after it's bounced, we need to work out what its initial velocity is. Initial velocity is 20% of what is, sorry, decreases by 20%, which means it is 80% of what originally was. So therefore it's going to be 80 over 100 times by 9,96 and we just need to pop that in a calculator. So that is going to be 0.8 times 9.96 which is going to be 7,97. So that's 7,97 meters per second. I hope you understand that. That's what they're saying. They're saying the ball went to Twing, stayed there for a little while and then went up. It hit the ground at 9,96 meters per second. Okay, this bit here we wouldn't actually see, but it basically stationary for a little while. And then it bounced up. And when it bounced up, some of the energy had been absorbed 
during the collision, it decreased by 20%, which means it only had 80% of the original speed, which is now 7,97 meters per second. Okay, so now that is our VI at 7,97. We still have um, down this positive, which means that this is going to be negative. Our final velocity that we're aiming for is zero because we want to find out what is the maximum height that this ball can reach when it's got a velocity of 7,97. The acceleration is going to be negative 9.8 because again we've chosen, actually it's going to be positive 9.8 because we've chosen down as positive. And we want delta x. That's what we're trying to find out. We're trying to find out what is the delta x. So let's see. I would again use this equation here. We've got Vf squared is equal to Vi squared plus 2a delta x. Vf is 0. Initial velocity is minus 7,97 all squared plus 2 times 9.8 delta x. Therefore, let's just use the calculators. Um, let's just square that. And we get 63.49. So 63,49, and that is going to be negative because I'm taking it across, divided by 19,6 is equal to delta x. So I'm going to divide this by 19.6, and you can see that that gives me 3,24. So it's negative 3,24 meters. And its negative is correct because we chose down as positive. So this means that this is upwards. So the maximum height that this ball can reach is, yeah, somewhere. It's 3,24 meters. So does it hit the ground? Nope, it doesn't, and this is why. I mean, does it hit the ceiling? No, it doesn't. Right, so we want a velocity versus time growth, and we've chosen down as positive. So this is velocity in meters per second, and this is time in seconds. And remember, you always need to put a heading in velocity versus time. Okay, we start off with a velocity of 8, and when it hits the ground 0.2 seconds later, it is going at a velocity of 9,96. That's when it hits the ground, okay? And it hits the ground there at 0, 0,2 seconds. But for 0 0.2 to 0 0.21, it does nothing. So at this point, 0, 0,21, it has zero velocity. Then it bounces up with a negative velocity of 7.97 seconds. So there we got 7.97. Okay, that there, those are supposed to be dotted lines, I'm sorry, it's not very clear. That's 7,97, .97, and then it travels up until it gets to a final velocity of zero, because at 3.24 meters, it is going at zero. Okay, and this is going to be, what is that, 0, 0,21, and that is 0, 0,2, I'm sorry about the tool. And what's important, and very important, is that this line should be parallel to that line, because this gradient is the slope of the velocity versus time graph, which is your acceleration. And your acceleration is acceleration due to gravity, which is 9.8, it's constant. So that slope there should be constant. Okay, and that there is how you do this velocity versus time graph. And please note what's important, the initial velocity of the ball, done. The velocity and time when the ball hits the floor. So there's the velocity and there's the time. The velocity and time when the ball leaves the floor, there's the velocity. I mean, there's the time, there's the velocity. Always make sure that you include everything that they've asked. Okay, that grade 12 brings us to the end of question 3 of this paper. Please join me for the next lessons where we'll go through the rest of the questions in the exam paper. Have a great day.